Hello, I'm Christine, and today, in honor of the release of Return to I Love Lost by Melissa De La Cruz, I'm gonna be counting down my top 10 movie and book sequels. First, I'm gonna say a big thank you to Disney Hyperion for sponsoring this video. For those of you who don't know, Return to the Isle of the Lost is the sequel to Isle of the Lost, which came out last year. The series is about the children of the most infamous Disney supervillains like Maleficent and Jafar. The first book was a prequel to the Disney Channel movie, Disney's Descendants, and now those characters have to return to the island where their parents have been banished to, where they grew up, it came out May 24th, so it's out now. I'll leave a link in the description. If you're interested, it's super cute and super fun. And now, without any further ado, let's get down to it. Top 10 book and movie sequels, doo doo, doo doo. And when I say book and movie sequels, I don't mean like book to movie adaptation. I just means like I have books and I have movies on this list. And when I say sequels, what I'm talking about is two. Like number two. I'm not considering three and four and all that sequel. I'm considering number two because there's just too many. There's too many. You consider all the numbers. I don't know why the list would go on and not. Coming in at number 10 is <laughs> Pitch Perfect 2. Oh, if you haven't seen Pitch Perfect yet, I highly recommend seeing Pitch Perfect. Comedy, great dialogue, and there is singing. Now Pitch Perfect was great. And then I saw Pitch Perfect 2 and I'm like, it's gonna be hard to live up to Pitch Perfect 1. Pitch Perfect 2 was hilarious. I found it funnier than the first one. I just came out of that theater so pleased, so impressed. <laughs> Coming in at number nine. nine. I have a book, Never Fade by Miss Alexandra Bracken. This was a fantastic second book. It was gut-wrenching and wonderful and all the character development and I loved it. It was also the first arc I ever got. This is the second book of the Darkest Minds series. If you stopped after Darkest Minds, you gotta, you gotta read, what are you doing? <laughs> Back to the Future 2. Do 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 God, I love the Back to the Future score. Back to the Future is great, and not enough people born in this new generation have seen Back to the Future. I feel. I feel when I mention it, people are like, what? Everyone should see Back to the Future. It's great. And the second one's great too. And it wasn't until I rewatched the second one just last year that I really appreciated how good it was. There's things from the first one and then the second one and then it just like, it, it's so, I don't want to spoil anything for you. You've got to watch Back to the Future. <laughs> Number seven, 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 seven. The Son of Neptune by Rick Riordan. Now, I know I say this all the time. If you haven't read Percy Jackson, mm, you got it. And you can't read this series without reading the Percy Jackson, the Olympus series. You just can't. So this is the second book in Rick's Heroes of Olympus series where Percy and crew are 16. So it's more young adult than middle grade in my mind, just because they're a little older. So the first book in this series is The Lost Hero. If you read The Lost Hero, you know there's not much Percy in that book. It's more about these other characters. And then you come in with the Son of Neptune, and it's so freaking satisfying, because finally, Percy is here. And if you've read Percy Jackson, you know how, you know Percy. You, you want to just always be around Percy. He's the best. It was so satisfying. It was so, so satisfying. Reunited and it felt so good. Coming at number six. Six, 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 six. Shrek number two. Oh my god. I don't know if you were around when Shrek came out. I know my brother was pretty little. Shrek was the best. It was the best. And we had it on VHS and we watched it all the time. And then Shrek 2 came out. Shrek 1, it was funny. There were a lot of wisecracks and stuff in it. Shrek 2 was hilarious. I found that so funny. Like Shrek 3, Shrek 4. Shrek 2 though. Damn. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to play. See, I love the music from Shrek 2. Accidentally in love. Oh, and the songs at the end of the Shrek. I just, I love that. Oh my god, an iconic, iconic Shrek 2. I wanna watch that movie again. It's been years. Like, I haven't seen that since I was in high school, I think. Coming in at number five, we got a classic. Catching Fire. It could not not be on this list. I, this is one of my favorite second books in a series ever of all time. That opinion stems toward the movies as well. Catching Fire, the film, was just... You probably heard me talk about this before. The most accurate thing I've ever seen. And it was just so beautiful. After finishing The Hunger Games, it was just like, how can you top the epicness of that book? And then you read Catching Fire, and it's like... Pfft. 
coming in at number four. Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2. <laughs> I love the Spider-Man movies. I love Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. Like, when I think of Spider-Man, I still think of Tobey Maguire. And I will forever. I love Spider-Man 1, but Spider-Man 2 was fantastic. This is another one I have to rewatch because it's been years now since I've seen but it. But when it first came out on DVD, we bought the DVD. I watched it a million times. It's just excellent. And I love the music. If you haven't watched the Tobey Maguire spider man I highly recommend it. <laughs> I know I said that this sequel's top 10 was just the second book in a series, the second movie in a movie series. And I'm sorry, I'm bending the rules for this one, Harry Potter, because I can't not have Harry Potter on this list. Harry Potter, the seventh and eighth movies are phenomenal, the best ever. I In what video am I gonna be able to be like, today I'm talking about the seventh and eighth movies in a series, let's do my top 10. No, there aren't any seventh and eighth movies in a series that are fantastic, like Harry Potter. There's like three series that have that many movies. The Star Wars, James Bond, and Harry Potter. None of them are are quite the same as Harry Potter because none of them have the same actors throughout all eight movies. Eight movies. We have an entire cast that went through eight movies. Okay, eight successful movies. You can't not talk about Harry Potter and I'm not even talking about the book series, which is my favorite series of all time, but we've already talked about that. So I'm concentrating on the movies right now. Phenomenal run. All of these eight Harry Potter films came out within a 10 year span. That's insane. It is such an accomplishment and I will forever be so proud of those movies. I know I talk about Harry Potter in every video, but it's worthy of every video. <laughs> Coming in at number two, 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 two. Number two is Clockwork Prince. I won't talk about it forever because I know I've talked about this a lot. Favorite trilogy of all time. Favorite book in the trilogy. One of my favorite books of all time. It's such a good sequel. It's such a good It's a good sequel. And last but not least, last not but not least, last but not least. I've never talked about this on my channel. Or maybe I have and I don't remember. My number one favorite sequel is Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. Yes. I don't care what you think about the Pirates of the Caribbean sequels. This movie made me so happy and I laughed so much. This is the second movie in the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. I don't know if you've seen Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. If you haven't, you should. I've never been so attracted to someone 40 plus than I have been to Captain Jack Sparrow in those three movies. And Orlando Bloom is beautiful too. And I'm not saying this because they're beautiful. I love the world that they've created in these Pirates movies. At that time, I didn't know any characters like Jack Sparrow. It was so exciting to see that world come back to life. I remember seeing in the theater and just smiling my face off. There's so many good memorable parts. The wheel at the end. I better job up dead. And guess what's, what's inside I did. The weird mythology and how having to really pay attention to put that stuff together. Like a lot of people don't like the third Pirates movie and a lot of people don't like even like the second Pirates movie. But I really like how complicated they are and how much I have to try. It reminded me of Lost and I love those characters. That scene on the Cannibal Island will just be burned in my mind forever. It was so great. It was just so much fun. Jack has the eye makeup on his face and there's those balls that were hanging from the edges of the cliffs. If you have seen them, I'm really curious as to your opinion on two and three. I love the scores of these movies. Oh my God. The scores of the Pirates film will forever be in my top 10 favorite scores. I listened to them in my car, like all through high school. I'll say I did not like the fourth movie. I felt like the story was done and I felt like the writing was super lazy when it came to making jokes. Pirates 5 is actually a thing that's happening and I think Will Turner's gonna be in it. So I'm hoping that we go back to the old Pirates days, but I'm gonna have really low expectations because I was so bummed out with Pirates 4. In conclusion, I love Pirates of the Caribbean. One two and three, two especially. Oh my God. And I love when they hit the up is down. That's one of my favorite songs on the score. That's from the third movie actually when they had to flip the boat. I love to hear your opinions on the sequels I talked about, if any of them are your favorites and what your favorites are if I miss them. And also these movies I talked about, have you seen them? Because if you haven't, really highly recommend. That is my top 10 sequels list. Sequels are a beautiful thing. Return to the Isle of Lost is out. More information about that in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Christine. I'll see you next time. At, I'm at XTMay on Twitter. I make videos every Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.